Everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Stephanie Lewis. Uh, I am the veterinarian here at Ohio Raptor Center. And with Giving Tuesday uh, coming up, we decided to focus on wing injuries. It's something that we see really commonly. Um, so I'm just going to go through a little bit of wing anatomy and uh, kind of related to your wing. And then I have a red tail hawk uh, preserved wing here. First of all, on this radiograph, um, you're looking at the bird that's kind of, it's kind of facing at you like this way. The head is going to be right about up here. Our legs are going to be down here. And then uh, this is actually the left side of the body. So it's like they're facing towards you. Um, the largest bone that you'll notice here is the humerus. So that's this part of your upper arm. And that's coming out of the shoulder. And then this is the elbow joint right here. Um, so on this bird, the humerus is actually cut off right here. But the... The humerus is going to here, and then here's the, el the elbow is right here. And then coming off this way are the radius and ulna. And so in mammals, typically the ulna is the smaller bone, but it's the opposite in birds. So the ulna is actually the much bigger bone, and the radius is the smaller bone. Um, and so the ulna is kind of more behind, you know, a little bit uh, you know, towards the feathers of on the wing. And the ulna is actually where the these large flight feathers, they're called secondary flight feathers, if they're coming off of the ulna, um, they're actually attaching to the covering of that bone, the periosteum. Um, so it actually really hurts if somebody pulls these out. So we actually see a ton of ulna fractures. I, I actually recorded that in the past year we've released uh, 17 birds with fractured ulnas. Uh, it's very, very common for that bone to fracture uh, because it's actually a really brittle bone. You think that the smaller bone would fracture more commonly, but it's actually the opposite. The radius is super elastic, whereas the ulna is super hard and brittle, so we'll see a lot of fractures of that bone. Um, coming up to the wrist or the carpus, they actually have a much more simple carpus or wrists than humans and a lot of mammals do. They uh, generally only have two carpal bones. In humans, there are eight carpal bones. And um, so they have a, just a radial carpal bone and an ulnar carpal bone, just depending on where they're sitting next to. Uh, in our raptors, we really often see a little accessory carpal bone, the little extra carpal bone on there. Um, but in most bird species, we're only, we only see the two. And the, the distal row of carpal bones, so the car row of carpal bones that's closest to what their equivalent of the hand is, which is right here, uh, that is actually fused with these bones of our hand. So these are our metacarpals here, and they're, they run right around here on the bird. And so that's the metacarpals here. Uh, but since we have that fusion, this we call this the carpometacarpus kind of squish the two words together. Uh, and, and they have less carpal bones uh, just to make them a little bit lighter for flight. So everything's kind of lighter and streamlined to make them uh, more aerodynamic and light. This, this larger bone is the carpal metacarpus. And then the, we sometimes we'll call that the major metacarpal. And then you'll see that there's a smaller one. We'll sometimes call that the minor carpal metacarpus. Um, and then this is actually digit two. So this is like the equivalent, the, the major metacarpal is like the equivalent of the, uh, our pointer finger, the metacarpal bone that attaches to our pointer finger. And then uh, this one, the smaller minor metacarpal bone is digit three. Um, they do have a thumb. It's pretty small, but it's in birds it's called the alula. And that's that little bone coming right off at the top. So that's the alula, and it actually has its own little set of feathers, and I can kind of separate that from this wing. So these feathers are coming directly off of the alula, which is the thumb. 
And it's really important for flight. Uh, if they have damage to the alula, it actually can sometimes prevent you know, perfect flight because they use it as sort of like the little flax on an airplane wing and it helps them slow down in the air without the stalling. So it is really important. And then they do have little vestigial remnants of phalanges or fingers. So the, the second digit is uh, phalanges are right here. And they have a little vestigial third. Um, they're pretty small and they end, the phalanges in this bird are right about from here to here. So all this is just feathers. The end of the actual, you know, bony and soft tissue part of the wing ends way up here. So birds also have um, really important, a, a pectoral girdle, we'll call it, and that's made up by three bones. This is the, the coracoid bone, which we do not have. Uh, this is specific for birds. Uh, it's, an, it's a large, pretty broad bone. You can kind of see it's sort of triangular in shape. And it's going from their sternum to the shoulder joint. And what it does, it's kind of, it, it works as the, keeps the shoulder from collapsing when they're flapping, when they're in flight. Uh, they also do have a clavicle, just like we do. Uh, their clavicles are fused together and it makes this U-shaped bone right here. And that's sometimes called the furcula. And then uh, Thanksgiving is coming, we, uh, you might see the wishbone in Turkey. So that is their clavicle of birds. And then this other bone, it's kind of hard to see because it sits behind the coracoid and the clavicle, and that's the scapula. Uh, and unlike in mammals where it's this broad, flat bone, it's actually just this long, skinny bone. And it does, but it does go down their back, just like ours does. We do see fractures and injuries to all of the bones of the wing, and for the most part, a lot of them are a fracture that we can repair for, and they all require their own unique kind of treatment. So for fractures of the pectoral girdle, so that's for either the clavicle, the coracoid, or the scapula, those fractures will often heal on their own just with cage rest. Sometimes we will bandage them for their own comfort. Uh, and of course give them pain, pain relief medications, which we do for any of these fractures, of course. Um, if we have a fracture of the humerus, this requires a surgical repair. So without surgery, if you have a bird with a fractured humerus, that bird would never be able to fly again without surgery. So what we do for those fractures is that they receive um, what's called an intramedullary pin and external skeletal fixator tie-in. So that means that we place basically a pin that goes through the center of the bone, through the long axis, um, and then it comes out and then we bend it so it goes in this direction. And then we place um, several, usually just two uh, cross pins that are going transversely across the bone. Um, and then uh, I typically use uh, a rubber drain filled with a, an acrylic that hardens uh, to place and make a connecting bar. And so what that basically does is that it holds the bones in the correct shape uh, and alignment while the bone heals. And then once the bone has healed, we take all the implants out. Uh, none of our patients are ever released with any kind of metal implant or plate or anything like that. Uh, for, for a number of reasons, but we want to make sure that everything comes out before they're released. So for fractures of the ulna, we can usually manage these with bandaging, um, and that's because if the radius is intact, it acts as a kind of internal splint, and so the radius will, for the most part, keep the ulna in reasonable alignment so that it can heal. And so in those cases, we can put what's called a figure eight bandage, uh, which is basically just, just kind of like a, a little sling or bandage to hold their wing in place while we allow that to heal. Um, all these kind of fractures do require a lot of physical therapy, which is always done under uh, isoforine anesthesia uh, because it is uncomfortable and painful for them. So we want to make sure that they're, they're not experiencing any of that pain. Um, for fractures of the radius, um, it's kind of similar. Sometimes we will place just a pin, an intramedullary pin, in the radius to uh, 
and repair it um, because it is kind of an elastic bone and sometimes it, it's a little bit uh, less inclined to heal as well. Uh, but it kind of depends on just the individual, whether or not we want to pin it. Sometimes we can just bandage it just like we do if the ulna is intact. Um, if the radius and the ulna are both fractured, that definitely requires a surgical repair. And so we will do something similar to what we do with the humerus into the ulna. And then the radius gets just that intramedullary pin. It's a bit too small to do anything beyond that, really. It's a pretty small bone. Um, but that, those, that's a, a really difficult fracture repair because you're repairing both bones at the same time. For a fractured carpal metacarpus, that again we can repair in two ways. Uh, it, it's definitely something that needs treatment for a full return to flight, but we can either uh, splint that, splint that bone, um, basically place a, a small um, light uh, metallic splinting material that has foam on the other side um, on the inside of that bone to hold it in alignment and then place the whole wing in a bandage. Um, the other way we can repair this bone is with also uh, surgery, placing an external skeletal fixator uh, with a very tiny little um, little bar on the outside of the wing with pins coming out of it and into the bone to hold everything in place while that bone heals. Um, phalangeal fracture, usually we can just, we can splint those as well, but we don't see a whole lot of problem with these, these bones. Most of the time it's a carpal of the carpus or or anywhere else. With any of these fractures of the wing, uh, they, they are really uh, high maintenance and, and require a lot, of, a lot of care for us to get them back out into the wild. Uh, they require physical therapy while the fractures are healing, uh, at least multiple times a week, sometimes up to a month or more while they're in care. Um, and then after that, they require conditioning in our outside flights. Uh, and our and then our largest flights to get them back into good condition.